Whenever you're ready, I'm ready to to talk. I'm always ready for you. All right, ask a question and let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm Jonathan Bloomberg, and I'm writing for a movie scene in Sweden. How are you? I'm doing so good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, especially now when I get to speak with you, of course. Ah, oh, thank you for saying that. I feel the same way. <laughs> so I, I was wondering how you guys felt like stepping into this universe. The Star Trek fans are uh, known to to be very clear what they think about the new adaptations of, of this uh, world or universe. And uh, from what I've seen, everyone seems to love it. So so that must seem feel nice for, for you guys. That does feel nice. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. The, we had no idea what what we were turning in, uh, especially shooting under lockdown. And um, we felt like we had something that was going to work, but we really did not expect the response. We, we did got. not. It was, And we were shooting season two when season one started airing and the reviews started coming in. So we were able to celebrate together and um, felt like we were given freedom uh, by the executives to really go for it in season two. And the things that we were a little riskier in season one were the things that popped. And so we've really been taking bigger swings in season two. The ship, the set is phenomenal. And walking onto the, walking onto that, um, you know, uh, what bridge. You, bridge. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> I much. You. Yeah. I got you. Oh, thank I you. I always knew you didn't <laughs> yeah. know what it was called. She worked in the fucking sick bay. She works in the sick. She's a doctor. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, the bridge was so phenomenal that you discovered new things and there were new behaviors. Uh, and also Crusher hasn't been, she's, she's not in Starfleet. So it, it really was exciting. It was really fun to uh, be on something that was that beautiful. Um, I'm thinking while watching that, that you have actually spent a couple of minutes in space for real, not, not only on, on Star Trek for all of those years, uh, on pretend, but you actually went up there. Yeah. Um, and, and I know a question that a lot of people probably ask is how it was looking back on Earth and, and stuff like that. But I, I'm, well, I, I have a, I have a different question. Yeah, you, you may answer that that uh, as well. But I, I've always been thinking, watching movies and stuff. When 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 you look back at Earth, you you only see Earth, but when you're down at earth and looking up you see all those stars if you're in a place where you can actually look up uh, because well you're outside a city or something uh, but when you were up there could you could you see all the stars much better from space no, uh, i had hoped that you could get a a view of the milky way like the, yeah like the best view is kind of yes, what i would imagine you where you're get. staggered but but what I saw is total blackness, eerie, bad, blackness, evil, ugly, death, blackness. In fact, looking at it, no, it's horrible. And yeah. then, and then, because you realize it's space and it's whatever that temperature is, 400 degrees below, somewhere around there, 300 degrees. I mean, you're dead. And, and when you look back on this little tiny rock, with the beige and blue and that's life. And yeah. my feeling then was extreme sadness, which I didn't understand until I landed. And I realized I was in grief for the earth. Yeah. Uh, so I, I actually, um, I've, I've seen the first four episodes of, of this uh, final season, but I also went back and watched the, the first two uh, oh. just prior to to this to to kind of just see that like how far uh, your character and the show have come since uh, mm -hmm. since back then so so i can only imagine how, how that feels for you can, can you tell me a little uh, about how how this long journey now has been for you oh my goodness well i love what you said about how much the show has changed and how much these characters have changed because I've spoken about this, uh, you know, so much over the years. And it remains one of my favorite things about Star Trek Discovery is that permanent change and upward mobility and character maturation 
is these are tenets of our story. These are cornerstones of our story. You really yeah. see these people become who they're meant to be. And um, you see them confronting themselves and each other, of course, but you see the effects and it's real. And like I said before, it's permanent. And it's been it's been so thrilling um, as an actor, really for all of us and for the writers as well, to be able to be so many things and show a group of people at so many different uh, levels of their development. Patrick, you, you've gone back to play this part, but you've also gone back to play Charles Xavier uh, over a long period of time. I was wondering how you feel uh, felt like creating two uh, iconic uh, characters like that and being able to go back to them so many times. How, how that has been that journey for you? Well, I, I can see why you would put those two things together but they are in fact very, very different. Um, Picard essentially became Patrick, or maybe I should say Patrick became Picard. And by, certainly by the start of season three, um, I was absorbing elements of Picard, which I had always wished had been inside me, and then reproducing them. With Charles Xavier, it was very different. And the whole um, history of X-Men, and particularly Xavier, uh, is so much more complicated and diverse than anything that was in Star Trek. I, I think it's very, very hard, actually, to try and find any comparisons between them. They are so different. Your own, is like... Star Trek stars uh, from when you were young uh, and now stepping into this world and having them say something about maybe your interpretations or something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's it's bizarre. The first time I met Brett Spiner, he got out of a, a car behind a casino in Las Vegas and I was standing there uh, and he uh, got out and said, Anson, <laughs> that was so weird. Because I've been watching him, you know, my whole life. Uh, um, it, it's um, it's it's a, one of the best parts about it, honestly, is getting to bump into Jonathan Frakes. I mean, in, Jonathan in Frakes, crazy place. Yeah, having Jonathan Frakes as a regular director for us on yeah. Strange New Worlds has been extremely helpful, especially as he played number one on his show, and he understands this world so well, and he is such an incredible presence on set and sets such a beautiful tone. For us when we work um it's 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 great all the interdynamics of all the the trek actors i was actually recording the opening monologue to the show um and as we were doing it i realized that that as i was recording that monologue um william shatner was in orbit at at that moment uh which is was absolutely true and and then I, next time i bumped into him i, I told him this story expect him to laugh and he just looked at me very seriously and he said you know I don't think I ever got it and I was like what do you mean he said I don't even I don't think I ever got that speech right <laughs> like, are you kidding me <laughs> he said no that's why I made them have me re-recorded every movie that we did because I, I just I was never quite sure of what it was and if I was getting it and I just don't think I ever got it right and I was like well that takes the pressure off me yeah, exactly and you told him that uh, you never felt like you got those the the actors uh, the captain's log uh, talks uh, right that you didn't feel like uh, but for him that those were like what he was trying to uh, like get near uh, and and you told him that I never felt like I, I got those right uh, but here in, in on this new show as well you are like the, the storyteller and and right. we all like to listen to you. So well, that's just, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, yeah. from, uh, I'll they'll hand me a script, <clears throat> and I don't want to read it first. Uh, the first time I'm uh, performing on it is in front of a microphone, and I'm reading it. Oh wow, no kidding! And I want to have that immediacy of I didn't know that because I didn't know that. Yeah. So if I'm reading it and I don't have to uh, rehearse it. It's there for the first time, ho hoping that you come along with me. Like, wow. 
So I'm not um, telling a story that I know about with a melodic tone and all. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I'm enjoying it like you are for the first time. And it just so happens I'm able to read it cold. And then I'll read it again. But generally, I like my first glimpse at the words. Yeah. I tell you what, um, we did not know that it was our final season when we shot it. Can you believe that? We, we oh, so, so you need, you got that information afterwards. Oh, that, yes, that's, yes. that's interesting. <laughs> it, exactly. It, it was an interesting experience because we went into season five thinking, oh, this is just season five. This is another season. Let's go. Let's fly. And then when we wrapped, um, we found out probably a couple of months or so um, after we wrapped. And, uh, you know, big respect to Michelle Paradise and Alex Kurtzman and Paramount Plus and CBS, really, because they fought for us to be able to tie it up and they gave it to us. And so we were able to go back and do a coda shoot um, that had just a little bit more story in it, but it was so impactful. I think they just knocked it out of the park with the few pages that we had, the few days that we had to shoot it but we were able to put a button on it. And we were also able to have that culminating experience of knowing that this is the last time we'll do this. This is the last time we'll do that. This is the last time we'll come together as a show family. So we we had both experiences of just like, just another day, you know, on, on Star Trek Discovery. And then we also had, this is our last day on Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, I didn't know that, but that. <laughs> That it, it feels really nice that we, you guys and, and we, the viewers, did, didn't, what weren't left hanging with like unresolved uh, yes. stuff. Exactly. <laughs> it's that, a blessing. That would have been really frustrating. Yeah. Exactly. It's a blessing. And, you know, we really, they, they, they really cherish uh, the show. They cherish the story and they wanted to be able to do it justice and, say goodbye to it in, in the proper way, uh, not just for the company, right? Um, but also for for the audience. Um, and just because of the, you know, because of the Trek franchise at large and we're building out and growing and, and expanding. So I'm I'm really grateful because it wasn't it wasn't promised for us to be able to do that. Yeah. So grateful we were able to. Yeah. If around a campfire, which I've done many times with kids, uh, and you can see their faces light up when you talk about mysterious things. They don't want to, some kids don't want to admit that they don't understand, they don't know, but every child skips along and looks at life anew. And if you can keep that childlike wonderment and bewilderment about life, that's what I think is the meaning of life. Yeah. And, and this being an extended universe and we still have a few other shows still yes. being ongoing yes. fingers crossed that that we might get at least one or uh, a few uh, like uh, appearances in, in other shows as well in the future because I, I guess you would be oh, yeah. open for that oh yeah I, I mean I think I can speak for all of us when I say that right I think we would all be open to that you know we are we're, we were the mothership and we're sort of sending off, uh, you know, um, yeah. our <laughs> children in a sense, right? And just like hoping for the best for them. And I think every single one of us would would love to to come back because we just, we love this world and we love these characters. We love each other. It's, you know, it's one plus one equals two, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thanks a lot for taking time to speak with me today mm -hmm. and best of luck with the premiere of this final season and and with everything in the future as well. Ah, thank you so much. It was so lovely talking to you. I hope I make it to Sweden one day. <laughs> <laughs> if you do, just give me a call. <laughs> Will do. Will do. <laughs> so uh, thanks a lot for giving me this time to speak with you and, and best of luck with the rest of this season. Uh, and I hope we get many more. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go, I have to ask you, who did that amazing spider girl drawing over your shoulder? Uh, it's my son. He, he he did it prior to to me talking to Tom Holland, so he he wanted to show his skills. Oh, <laughs> well, well done. He's a very what's his name? Uh, Leon. Leon, you're a very good artist.
I'll, I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank That's you. Bye. Bye. Bye.